Why is Omega so important? We finally found out in the last night's episode of The Bad Batch. So the reason she's important, I'm just going to get right to it, is because her blood is the only blood that can morph with a Force-sensitive being and then be cloned. So if you guys know in Legends, and they, they take a lot of stuff from Legends and stuff and they adapt it or morph it. In the Force Unleashed games, it was practically impossible to clone a Force-sensitive being like Galen Merrick properly. And the reason for that is because, well, I mean, imagine if you could do that with the Force and then you would have like a million Palpatines or like a million Yodas. It just, that wouldn't be right, right? The Force doesn't like that. It puts it out of balance and it's inorganic. So in Omega's case, because she's a defect, she's a mutant, she actually has blood that is able to bind. It's like she's like O positive. She can give to everybody. So she has blood that can bind to a force sensitive being. And that blood that's mixed can then make a force sensitive clone, whatever they want using that blood. And they can create another Palpatine. They can create whatever they need. So that's why they need her alive. That's why she's so important. Because with that blood, you literally can make a million Palpatines and every single one of them will be successfully force sensitive. So that was my general understanding with it and why she's so important. This would literally make her probably the most important character to Palpatine in the entire Star Wars galaxy because it can lead into Dark Empire, which is where Palpatine had a vat of clones of himself that he could transfer his essence into, right? So he needs a viable host that can house his midi-chlorians that can essentially do the same things that his body can do. And then he needs the ability to essence transfer. So once he has those two things, he's immortal but not in the way that Plagueis wanted. Plagueis always said that being immortal, the true sense of being immortal, would be to be in your own body, your same body, forever. Not to be jumping into essence transfer or cloning or anything like that. That's fake. That's not real. And he looked down upon that. He said that's not the real form of immortality. So Palpatine, I don't think, really cares. I think he's doing whatever he can in order to stay alive forever, whether it's his body or a clone body. He just transfers his essence into it. But Plagueis right now is somewhere laughing and uh, ridiculing Palpatine. That, like, you could never figure out what I could figure out, which was true immortality. And they still could bring Plagueis back somehow. So if he was truly successful at immortality, then I, you know, he shouldn't be dead no matter what, no matter what happened. So anyways, uh, that's why Omega is so unbelievably important to the Empire and to Palpatine. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens to her next since this is literally like a one-off, right? They would have to create some mutant in order to do this because it just wouldn't make sense otherwise. So yeah, pretty cool. If you create clones, I'm just going to say if you create clones from Force Sensitives, I'd say like a million times, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a failure. And the clones will either turn out to be non-force sensitive, like we saw in Rise of Skywalker with Palpatine's uh, clone of himself, or they're going to be suffering from psychosis. They won't have certain powers. They'll have other powers you don't want. They'll be extremely uh, dismissive or rebellious or they won't be able to be contained or uh, they'll have a short lifespan, right? So they'll be fragile, weak. It's, uh, it's hit or miss with that. So um, it seems like with... Omega, they're able to make something that actually is always force sensitive, no matter what you create, no matter what you clone it with, as long as you have midi-chlorian blood, which Palpatine does. Kind of cool. All right. See you guys later. May the force be with you always.